okurayen. Okura means he bears us up. So okurayen, he bears us up. Amen. Okurayen, okurayen, enti yen suro, enti miso. Yen suro means we are not afraid. Can you please turn to somebody and tell him or her, we are not afraid. Somebody say, I am not afraid. Amen. Amen. Please listen. <laughs> say enam. Say enam means when we walk through. Owo sum sum abomu poa. When <laughs> when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, to me no the power. A daddy is manifest. A biribiara always at all times. Ju o kurayen. Ju means truly, truly, true. Oh, yes. Ju o kurayen. Jemu ye ye. Ye means well. So he bears us up well. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus.
Eja Paisu, and Kunin Tifo, Eura Hati Yampotenti, Hani Akra, so shall fall. And that means today. Menya means I have or I have received. Enije means joy. Hallelujah. And that menya ahoto. And that again means today. Menya means I have. Ahoto in peace. <laughs> Amen. Kanina mi huna mane. Kani means at first. Nami hunu amane. I was suffering. Osu in tears. Arahu in sorrows. But today I have joy. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. And the main energy, and the main auto, restore your supercha, the shino achieve me, Karina Mifuna Mane, Osuni Araho, say, say, main energy, a fame and auto. And the main energy, and the main auto, restore your supercha. She know I check me, can he not be full of money? Oh, so the arrow, say, say, man, you check. I'm fake, man, you talk. I'm fake, man, to you be. Hey, you be cheerful now, yeah. That's why you know. I shall be with you. Say, I'm ready to be so ready. Come here, come on. Me out in your favor. Say, 
upon. Wudin means your name. Okay, I'll call upon your name. Amen. Please, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amansai Hine. Amansai means the word. Hine means king. So the king of this world. Amansai Hine Israel Domberima, the captain of the host of Israel. That is Jesus for you. Amen. Osajefo, our savior. Amen. Okumu Okufo, the warrior of warriors. That is Jesus for you. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Yes, 
Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here? Right. Tonight we have a short service. And um, I'm going to launch a new book. Powerful new little book that's coming out. Tonight, tonight, um, I want to share with you about the, the purpose of the fire. And um, the next time we have the opportunity, I want to share with you about the brightness of your fire. Because in this book, when Rick Joyner was given that vision of the torch, as for me, if I don't have a vision, I'll use somebody's vision. I use it until I have my own, but if I don't have mine, I have somebody's vision. It's working for me. Yeah. And um, the Lord told him that the brightness and the power of the fire and of the torch depends on something. And so we'll talk about that. But tonight, just 
Turn with me to 1 John 3. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you found First John 3? Yes. Now, are you there? When God calls you, He has a purpose in mind. And you must understand His purpose. And God has enemies. And His enemy is a devil. Someone who hates Him. If you have ever had someone who rebels against you, in a certain way, you will understand the, a little bit of what hatred is. But if you haven't experienced it, you will not fully understand the hatred that Satan has for God. Because you have to experience someone who rebels against you. When you, when you see people who make coups, they overthrow governments and um, come into power, Many of them are motivated by great hatred for the people that they are overthrowing. That is why they kill them, either by firing squad or by just on the way, just clear them off. So that's rebellion. Rebellion, anarchy, is an, comes from an old French word, which means people who fight or fighting against governments, an anarchist, someone who fights against a government. So, we usually think anarchy means confusion, but actually it means fighting against the established authority or the government. And Satan rose up against God himself and fought God with great hatred and great passion. And um, in all my years, you know, I, 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 I don't like to mention the word Judas on anybody, even people that have been around and have left and, you know, people who have been, some have been rebellious and so on. We don't have to be afraid of that word because it's a reality. But it's a very terrible thing. You know, Jesus said something. Jesus said something. He said, um, of all the bad people that he met, right, he, he never made uh, such a comment about them. But of Judas, he said it would have been better that he wasn't born. Now, that's a serious thing. I mean, we are going into realms that it would have been better that he wasn't born. Are you there? So, brothers and sisters, when you meet a rebel, and I have met some people who rebel against, and usually in the midst of their rebellion, they are filled with hatred. You know, so never take decisions when you are angry or bitter. Do you get it? Yes. Because sometimes you may go through something, you may be hurt, you may be offended, and you start to take decisions. And it can go into something else. I tell you, that word Judas, try in your life that something even in the faintest shadow of that name and that description shouldn't come around you. Can I have an amen from somebody? All right. 
But Satan would love to do that to you. But anyway, I'm just talking about the feeling of somebody hating you. Perhaps we do not understand what it means. But in times of war, when there's especially civil war, you find tribes rising against each other, like in Rwanda and um, what's the other? Burundi. And they kill each other, thousands of them. So then you see what is in us and how much hatred there is. In Ghana, we pray that we will not see something like that. But if it comes, you'll be surprised at your neighbor who has been watching you for years come and go, not knowing that the person has marked you and timed you for something. Are you listening to me? But the point I'm trying to make is that God has a great enemy called Satan. Satan is against everything that God stands for. Satan was Lucifer in the house of the Lord, singing and worshiping. And he rose up with great rebellion in his heart to fight against the one who created him. He's full of passionate hatred for God and for anything that God has made. And that is why in Isaiah, the Bible describes him as the one who has turned the earth into a wilderness. Because he has destroyed the earth. And the, wilder, the whole earth is being destroyed by the works of Satan. And human beings are being destroyed by the works of Satan. No one has any idea of the extent of the destruction of the human race. As Satan enjoys to destroy people that are made in the image of God and to take them to hell. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And we are not dealing with an enemy who doesn't have passion. We are dealing with a zealous enemy. We are dealing with an enemy full of zeal and passion and who doesn't get tired. What he tempted you with at the beginning he is not tired until you die to tempt you again with the same temptation. Do you remember when Jesus was tempted in the garden, uh, in the wilderness? He was tempted and he was told, if you are the son of God, come down, throw yourself, throw yourself from the pinnacle. Turn the stones into bread. Show your power. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, and the devil left him for a season. Yeah. Yeah. But we never hear where the devil came back. Because the Bible says he left him for a season. Yeah. Yeah. But when you read the Bible, at the, at the end, in the last minute, mm. when he was on the cross, Satan came again with the same message. If you are the son of God, do, do you remember? I'm, talk, I'm talking about at the beginning. At the very beginning, what he told him. I say that the, the devil, as until when, when you lie down in the coffin and you press the right side, you press the left side, and you knock up and nobody opens, then, then you know that it's over. But until then, you will be surprised at the words you will hear that you say that, ah, I heard this when I was a teenager. I'm too old to hear this. I heard when I was 23. I heard this when I was 33. I heard it when I was 43. They just la 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 la. If you are, if you are, if you are, do you remember that if you are? They said if you are. It was in the wilderness. If you are, if you are. At the beginning, before he did even one miracle, the devil came to him. And at the end, the Bible said, they wagged their tongues at him. And they said, save thyself. So throw yourself down and save yourself. Same thing. 
Throw yourself down. Save yourself. Show power and save yourself. No. Come down. Throw yourself down. Come down. And we will believe in you. <laughs> save yourself from the soldiers. We will follow you. If you are the son of God. So you are dealing with an enemy. He will never be tired until you are finally dead. That's why we write on the, when you are dead, rest in peace. You say that there's a reason. It's been written for a long time. There's a reason for that thing. Sometimes you don't understand what people do for a long time. R.I.P. 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 You don't know what it means. It's, it has a meaning. It's a message. One brother. <laughs> He was suffering from fornication. You know, I felt sorry for him. When I read the book by Rick Joyner, the the latest one that he has, When God Walked the Earth, where Satan was tempting him in the wilderness, Satan said to him, but how could you take this body? You see, this body is really some way. No, no matter, you may be in the middle of a church service, very holy type of preaching is going on. And then... supposed to be in your mind contrary to every good and holy imagination oh man so in that vision Satan mocked at Jesus that how could you take such a body (laughs) such a body oh like Paul said oh wretched man that I am What I do not want to do, that is what I've been doing. Oh, shame. Are you listening? So there was a certain brother. And the brother was suffering from fornication. You know, I've learned something. Sometimes... It's not the person's intention to do evil. You know, sometimes, I'm not saying, you're not justifying it, but sometimes it's a problem. It's a real problem. Hmm. Uh, So, the brother fell then he rose up. We encouraged him. But then he fell again. Then he rose up. Then he fell again. Then he rose up. And he fell again. So one day he came to see me. And he said, Pastor, I want to see you about something. I said, what is it? He said, Pastor, I want to be castrated. Do you understand castration? That is, he wants the balls to be removed. <laughs> hey, when he said it, I was feeling so. I said, no. What type of problem is this? What type of body? Huh. Anyway. So Satan loves to